Hey y'all, CB here, the no BS welder here at NBS Welding. Uh, hollering at you today, I'm really excited that uh, we got going on what we got going on right now. You know, you, you, it's kind of like one of them things I never had happen before until it did. Um, I'll tell you what I got in the shop that we're going to be working on. It's going to be a great project here on a trailer. And uh, this is the first time that I've ever done a job for a viewer. Uh, now, I've done a lot of work for local people here, and those people became viewers of the channel because when I was working for them, you know, I mentioned the, that I had a YouTube channel, and they started watching it. But in this case, this is a case where this is someone that I didn't know, but they were a viewer of the channel, and they wanted some welding work done, so they contacted me. And uh, had a list of work that they wanted done on a trailer. I said, sure, I'll do it. Uh, part of what's truly amazing about it is that uh, my new buddy and, and, and his lady, Anita, that brought me this trailer, um, they live in Virginia Beach. Uh, my new buddy, Paul, is a mechanic uh, for the Port of Virginia. Now, I don't know if you know the, the, the location area, information area of this situation, but this trailer came from six and a half hours away. My buddy Paul and, and his lady Anita hooked this trailer to their truck in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and drug it all the way across the state of Virginia, over the mountains, through the Monongalia National Forest, halfway across the state of West Virginia, and brought it to me here in the center of the Appalachian Basin to work on. Now, they that drove by at least a thousand welding trucks just to get this thing here, which absolutely amazes me. But my new buddy Paul, he wanted me to do it, and it just tickles me to death that uh, that he brought it here to work on. Now, there's several different things on this trailer. I don't know how I'll do the video. Actually, the way I was kind of thinking uh, with the list of jobs that, that, that Paul gave me, we might do a couple different videos, uh, maybe break it up. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, hey, let's take a look at what we got in here. This is a 20-foot car trailer. Uh, it's a Bigfoot trailer. I believe it was built in Virginia. I remember him mentioning that. Uh, it is, it, everything I can tell about it so far, it appears to be a, a really good quality trailer. Um, and I've talked to Paul about what he wanted and he's got a lot of really good ideas. And as you can see by what he brought me, uh, he's put some thought into this and already obtained probably darn near all the material that it would take to do what he's wanting to do. Now, to get into what he's wanting to do, uh, he's got a lot of really good ideas to... Uh, you know, it sounds like to me, if, if I was just going to guess... Uh, this is probably, there's a decent chance that he's thinking this is the only trailer he's going to mess with. And it's kind of going to be his Swiss army knife of trailers. Uh, one of the ideas he's got is about building, uh, building walls, removable walls for the sides and front and rear of the trailer, uh, where like, if you wanted to haul firewood in it, you know, a, a flat car trailer like this is not really... Not the, the type thing you'd normally haul firewood in, but when you've got these standard pockets, you know, you got these standard pockets like this, and he's got some really nice of these standard posts that'll go in those pockets. He got a bunch of two-inch channel where uh, we could have rails. Uh, these would be walls that would be light enough that you could lift them, you could lift them out of there and just take them off when you didn't want them there. But then if you wanted to haul a great big load of firewood, you could stick them in place, load it full of firewood, and, uh, you know, it'd be kind of like you, you were using your, your flat car trailer as a box trailer. Uh, he wants 
he's got this aluminum toolbox. He wants this aluminum toolbox mounted up here, but he wants it elevated. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, up high enough that you can put a car on the car trailer and put the front of the car under the toolbox. So that, the the like right now, that toolbox, the way it's on there, it's eating up a couple feet of your trailer. We don't want that. Uh, so the, the box is going to move up, and when it moves up, it can move forward. You know, we don't want it interfering with the jack or anything like that, but he was saying, uh, asking me if I could make it where it'd be sitting on some kind of a frame uh, where a car could go up underneath of it. I looked at my wife's 2020 Explorer, which I would think as cars go, uh, her Explorer is probably pretty high. Because it's more of an SUV than a car. We call it a car sometimes. but um, It's 48 inches at the windshield wipers. And you wouldn't pull... Uh, you wouldn't pull it up that far. So, uh, when Paul was talking about it being 35 to 50 inches, uh, I don't think you'd have to go 50. But you could. And um, we're going to come up with something to, that, to, to put that toolbox up there where it's going to be elevated and, and moved forward and out of the way. There's also a winch mount on this trailer. Uh, and he said there's a winch. He's got a winch in the toolbox that needs put on there. So we'll put that on there. And there may be a few other things on the list. Uh, he's got... I think there's supposed to be some uh, aluminum plates uh, in the toolbox that go on those ramps. And uh, we'll have to get into that. But pretty much the idea with the aluminum plates is that if you were winching a car up on uh, this trailer, that ramp, you know, the wheels are going to go clunk, clunk, clunk over those angle iron bars. And if you're winching a car that didn't run up on your trailer, you would want that ramp to be smooth. So that was the idea with the aluminum that he was talking about. So I haven't, I haven't got everything unloaded yet. We're going to get into that right now. And, uh, we're going to get all this material shook out and we'll see what we got. Let's get into it. Got the material off the top of that toolbox and uh, got it organized. Some of it on the pallet right there. And underneath of there was the, these are the aluminum plates uh, that P Paul wanted on the ramps. And that's going to help a lot. Like I was saying, if you're winching a car up the ramp, uh, you know, the car wheel would go clunk, clunk, clunk clunk into these bars and that would be really undesirable now if you were driving a tractor up the ramp that was pulling itself up the ramp under its own power those bars would be exactly what you want you know if, if you're driving it you want the traction uh so something that you're uh something that you're winching is going to be different and and he said you know he wanted these bolted on so he could take them off and uh, that goes back to like the Swiss Army knife idea of the trailer where he's going to have a set of ramps that you could use either way. So uh, I have took some measurements and the aluminum that he's got is exactly the right size. That's great. So the next thing uh, is going to be uh, there's going to be some drilling involved with getting them bolted on there. Uh, uh, the other thing that I'm seeing is this is something we're going to have to do something about. From the top of the ramp to the top of the support bar, there's a distance right here. And uh, see what's going to happen. When you're bringing things up the aluminum flat bar, if it's just setting across here on this 18-inch span, it's going to bend that flat bar down. It's going to bend that diamond plate in the middle. And it really would not take much to stop that from happening. We just need something between that 
and the support bars, uh, we need something there to space it. Now, the first thing I thought of was some one-inch aluminum tubing. Uh, the only thing is, here's one thing. I don't have any one-inch aluminum tubing here, and if I did order some for this, one-inch aluminum tubing is expensive and unnecessary. Uh, we don't need it to be tubing. Square tubing is extremely expensive. Uh, it's actually, as far as a bar material, it's the most expensive. Angle iron, channel, anything like that is always less. So I got to thinking about, you know, I know how to work with what I got. And what I got here is uh, I have one eighth inch sheet aluminum, like you see out there. Uh, in the old truck bed there um, and I have a break so I'll tell you what I'm thinking of doing let me go grab a piece of material I want to take a piece of 1 8 aluminum like I've got here I'll take a piece of that sheet and put it in my break and bend it 90 degrees like this where I can set it on his aluminum diamond plate uh, and I need this to be one inch from right here to right here. Uh, obviously this is smaller than that. So we got to figure out how to do that in a break. Got those pieces made right there, no problem. Uh, these are gonna work great to uh, to put on the back of here to support that. Now the next thing, we're gonna be turning our attention to 
putting the holes in this to bolt it on there and there's a few things we want to consider about it i've got one of the ramps down right here and uh one of the things that we would want to consider is uh where the holes will be and uh what i want to do is i would want them center to center on the channel now uh, if you haven't seen the way I normally do that before when I measure center to center of two things or when I measure center to center of something that's the same size like that three inch channel and that three inch channel those are the same width so if I hook my tape on the right side of that channel and measure to the right side of this channel and I get 16 and 9 sixteenths then that's the center to center measurement of this channel and see it would make no difference if I measured from the left side of that channel to the left side of this channel you're still going to get 16 and 9 sixteenths because if if the thing that you're measuring has the uh, you know as long as it's the same width your most accurate center to center measurement is going to be measuring like from the right side of both of them or the left side of both of them. It doesn't matter. The only time it would mess you up is if one side was a piece that was wider than the other side. That wouldn't quite work. And another thing we want to consider about uh, where our holes would be would be in the other direction. And when I say the other direction, what I'm talking about is up and down the ramp. So let's take a look at that. As far as up and down the ramp, I'm going to say I want the holes to miss the bars that go across. You know, so I'd want to be like there'd be obviously a hole up here somewhere at the top. And then any of the other holes that would be in here, you would want them between the bars. I wouldn't want a bolt to come down or a screw to come down right in the center of the bar. Uh, not to say that you couldn't have a screw or a bolt do that, but it's undesirable. And then you're going to have one down here, maybe three quarters of an inch from the edge. And that's not going to be hitting the bar. So that's a couple things that we'll consider on that. And since we know uh, what our center to center is, we'll put some marks on here and we'll take another look. Just realized another thing. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate but not a big deal about this uh, these these diamond plates uh, if, if you look at how they're sheared and, and you look at the the edge they're not exactly the same this one has a whole lot of a diamond plate here if you tried to match that up with this edge there's very little of one on this one uh, I just don't quite a bit of one right there so here's the thing these are gonna have to be pretty custom in their position and there will be a top and bottom and a left and right uh, here's here's the reason why you don't want your you don't want your bolt head to halfway hit on one of these uh, diamonds sticking up on the floor plate and and halfway hit you know where it's just making contact like that and you want it like there so that when that bolt tightens down it's on a flat place if it hits the the floor plate in a place where you know it just catches one side that's undesirable it's not going to tighten correctly it you know it's just undesirable now if you had to you could probably sand the material down that's undesirable especially on this because this has a really nice finish that i would not easily be able to copy so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be putting these on the ramp and just custom marking uh you know i know that if uh 
if I want 16 and 9 16 center to center and these are 18 inches wide which is what they are and what the ramps are um, I'm pretty much going to have a whole three quarters of an inch in from each side and then the other holes are going to be in between the braces so we're just going to have to lay this down here and custom mark them. These number 12 steel binder screws that I get from Life Tight Metals. This is what I'm going to try to use to secure these uh, aluminum floor plates onto these ramps. And um, by starting with a number 12, which for this number of screws, I definitely feel like a number 12 is big enough. But it's also small enough that if I have trouble, I've got options. Uh, another option in doing this would obviously be to uh, drill a hole and tap out uh, threads. You know, you can tap threads into that channel. And that way you wouldn't have to have a nut on the bottom. That would be nice. Uh, if, if, if these screws right here are in the size number 12, you know, if I get these on here and I don't like it, I'll drill the holes out bigger and maybe tap them and put bolts in them the other option that you you would have would be to put nuts on the back side one thing that kind of sucks about channel is that the other side of this channel the inside of the flange it's not flat channels thicker at the corner and it gets thinner like an s-beam does the same thing you can use bolts on channel but you need what's called a hillside washer which you can you don't have hillside washers that, that you can buy. You can purchase hillside washers. But uh, obviously, all these things that I'm going into further with is undesirable. If the self-tapping screw will work, that's great. You wouldn't have to fool with putting a nut on the backside, uh, blah -de da If uh, you can get away without the labor of tapping threads because you use a self-tapping screw that's great uh if you don't need the hillside washers that's great um but one of the things about using a self-tapping screw on channel like this this channel's pretty thick for a self-tapping screw it's pretty heavy um now by experience i can tell you that one of the ways to deal with driving a self-tapping screw in a little thicker material is by pre-drilling a hole with a regular drill bit. But you got to know what size hole. Now, when you run a self-tapping screw into really thick steel like this, I would be pre-drilling a hole with a bigger bit than what's on the end of this self-tapping screw. And the reason that I would be doing that is this self-tapping screw has a bit on it that's more more on the tight side for thinner material than this channel where i drill through this channel and this channel is going to be a quarter of an inch thick or even thicker uh, this bit that's on the end of here is a little bit small now there's no doubt about it there are self-tapping screws available that are more designed for thicker material uh 
I could have a million dollars worth of self-tapping screws and, and not have the exact one for everything. Generally, the ones for thicker material have a super fine thread, way finer than the thread that's on this one. Um, the problem I've run into with those is, yeah, you could probably run them into a 5 16 or even a 3 8 thick piece of steel, and they'll stick in there forever. But if you run them in there and back them out, the threads are gone. <laughs> the second time you go in with them, they won't hold. They're not made for that. Uh, and that's why, from experience with the steel binders, if I take this number 12 steel binder and I pre-drill a 3 16 hole with a regular drill bit, which is bigger than the bit on the, on the steel binder, and then I run this steel binder in there, I can run it in, it'll hold. I can back it out. I can run it back in, and it'll still hold. And we always have the option later to maybe tap a hole if that's what you decide to do. Maybe drill it all the way through, put a bolt in it, put a nut on the backside. You can take steps to get more elaborate with it very easily. We're not going to start out real elaborate. We're going to start out real simple. I'm going to run a 3 16 drill bit through these things. I'm going to run a, a number 12 steel binder in it. Let's see how this works. Got some dozens done on here. Uh, these do have to come back off. Have to take them back off to get my braces put in the center that I made on the brake. But we got all our holes and self tappers in there. One thing that uh, I very often do. Uh, on when I use self tapping screws a lot of times uh, if need be on the back side I'll take a cutting wheel and cut the screw off and uh, I stood this one up and I'm realizing that the screws really don't stick out too much it's not something that it's just not something that's it's not in a place where Somebody's going to jam their shoulder into it. It's probably better if you don't cut the screw off if you don't have to. Especially on screws like this that might need to be backed out and put back in. Uh, so, I'm not going to cut them off. Uh, I did find a problem when I went to put the ramp up. Couldn't It wouldn't go all the way up. Uh, the aluminum was already cut and... I felt sure it was the right thing to do to put it flush on the back, which it, it's the right thing to do. But uh, that center brace right there, it hit there. And it kept me from putting the ramp up far enough to, to pin it with the bar. Um, so I took the aluminum death wheel from hell and I put a little bit of a notch in this one spot just to see how deep I had to go so that I could get it all the way up. And what that's showing me is that even the amount that I notched out of that is nowhere near the screw. And the amount, that's telling me pretty much that the amount... See, you're going to want to be able to slide this ramp back and forth so you don't want to notch in just one spot to clear that 
So uh, realizing that, you know, it just needs like this much taken off and the screws back here. I think the right thing to do is to take the, when I take the aluminum off, I'll just cut that much off the whole top. And that way, when you slide the ramp back and forth, you'll have the clearance. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt right here to have that much taken off. So that's going to be the clean way to, to fix that issue right there. You can see there how much, you know, we only need to take half inch will do it. Half inch would probably do it. But I'm happy with how everything's going. Um, yeah. I've been working. I ain't had time to fool with y'all, but I didn't mean to neglect you, really. I didn't. I got some do's and done I don't want to show you. Now, if you look from back here yonder, see? Everything looks the same right here, but it's it's different. It's different. Because this one, right, this one right here is not done, and this one right here is. So let me let me fill you in on what what's going on here. Uh, we'll get up here and get a closer look. Now you can see that the piece I made is in there. Splicification. I didn't think there was going to be a splicification because uh, the side, based on the size of my brake, I was able to bend a piece that was as big as the distance from the top crossbar to the bottom crossbar. But when I got this up there and got to looking at it, I realized that I wanted the, the brace to go all the way to the top and have another brace come across and then go all the way down see down here with another brace coming across so even though my brake wasn't big enough to make this piece long enough to go from right there all the way up to there we still fixed that situation uh, by doing a splicification. I just made me another piece and welded on there, you know, so that would be longer. And then I made a couple more pieces so I'd have a piece going across the top of this and one going across the bottom. Whole idea being, obviously, we're trying to keep that plate, keep that aluminum plate straight and um looks good looks like it's going to work you you know having the piece at the top and the bottom since there's not a part of the ramp going across there uh having a piece welded to the aluminum plate is going to help quite a bit and then right here where when there's weight a tire on this plate pressing it's gonna press down on these crossbars and that should keep that aluminum floor plate from getting squished down and having a belly in the middle like I'm pretty sure it would do I'm pretty sure it would have a belly in it pretty fast you wouldn't take very many things you wouldn't take very many cars or tractors or nothing up that ramp without without bending that but that all went real well we just got to do the other we got to do the same thing to the other one so let's do that got all the parts made right here got these two i made to go across the top and the bottom and then the piece i made that runs the length of it so we'll take that other one off Trim it down, of course. Remember, it needs to be trimmed down for clearance. We'll put all these parts on it. Weld it up with the Millermatic 252 aluminum MIG set up with a spool gun. And see how that goes.
So that's what that looks like on the table with the parts welded on it. And, uh, you know, I'll probably, I'll probably speed that up so that, uh, you know, it's not too boring to watch. But something that I wonder if, if you see whenever, uh, whenever I'm doing something like that, you know, when I'm, if I'm going to make a weld like this weld right here, I'm taking that gun and I'm holding it here at first before I start. I'm holding it here because that's where I'm going to stop. And then I pull back and start. The reason I'm doing that is I want to make sure I'm comfortable at the end of the weld. If I'm uncomfortable at the beginning of the weld, that's when I'm the least fatigued. You know, it's when it's, it's okay. It's a little more okay to be uncomfortable when I start. You want to set yourself up to be comfortable at the end where you're going to end. Now, a weld this long is not that big a deal, but sometimes you're making a lot longer weld. The What, what I try to do is I try to get cocked. You know, if I'm going to stop right here, I call it getting cocked. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get in position where I'm real comfortable here. And then I'll get cocked by reaching way over here and starting. And when I start, I'm not very comfortable. But as I go, I'm getting more and more comfortable. And I'm getting more and more comfortable as I'm getting fatigued. You know, by, by, by doing the work, I'm getting fatigued. But it's okay because I'm getting in a better position. I'm giving all these tips, you know, and I'm, and I'm working on, I'm working on this YouTube channel and I'm, I'm investing money. Uh, I made a lot of videos with an old S20 phone that I found out, you know, the camera sucked on it. I paid $1,200 for this S24 that's got, uh, badass cameras on it. And I, I hate to stop right now, but I just got another phone call from a viewer. And I've got to stop and talk to you guys for a minute. Look, a huge amount of the viewers of my content do not have a Google account. They don't have a YouTube username. They're not, that means they can't subscribe to the channel. That means they can't comment on the videos. But people are not only picking up the free advice that I'm getting and calling me and texting me and, and asking me questions, which I'm glad to answer, but y'all are taking up my time and you're not helping the channel, you're actually hurting the channel. Let me explain to you how this YouTube algorithm works. When you watch a video, and you don't have a YouTube account and you're not subscribed to that channel and you don't like that video and you don't comment on it, you just watch it and leave. The YouTube algorithm is going to bury that video where nobody's going to see it. You guys have probably noticed how you go on YouTube and if you look up a video on putting joint compound on sheetrock. Then within the next few times that you look at YouTube, all kinds of videos will come up on your home right in front of your face that, that are explaining to you uh, about putting joint compound on sheetrock. Those are the most popular videos about putting joint compound on sheetrock because people are subscribed to that channel, they're commenting on the videos, they're liking those videos on that channel. They're, uh, they've rung the notification bell. You guys that are watching my channel and getting my content and you're not subscribed, you're not commenting, you don't like the videos, you're, you're not ringing a notification bell to receive notifications, you're killing me. You know, sometimes I'm putting 35 or 40 hours of my own time into making a video, editing a video, uploading a video that creates $17 in ad revenue. 
And it's not being shown to the people that watch welding videos because so many viewers of my channel are not subscribed. They don't comment. They don't like the videos. They're not ringing the notification bell. Help me out here. It doesn't cost you a dime. I paid $1,200 for this uh, S24 Ultra phone with this these badass cameras on it to produce these videos. I'm putting all this time into it. It doesn't cost you a dime to sign up a, a Google account so that you can subscribe to my channel and and instead of instead of burying my videos in the YouTube algorithm for nobody but you to see for free they'll be shared with other people and the channel will grow and I can get uh some reason to continue doing this help me out sign up with a Google account and subscribe when you watch a video like that video and comment you can comment anything. You can make a negative comment. You can hit the period. Don't even, you know, you can comment no comment. But go to the comment section. Hit a letter, hit a number, hit anything. Help me out. Got that second aluminum plate installed there. So we're done on the ramps. And I don't know if I don't know if my buddy Paul intended for there to be that much aluminum welding and fabrication on this part. And, and you know, a lot of times on a project, there's something you think's really simple that's a lot more work. And then there's a there, there'll be another part that you think's a lot of work that's actually uh, real simple. You know, and and that happens a lot. What I notice, but uh, this is this is necessary. Having this piece right here where that, you know, there's so much gap between that plate and the braces that go across these ramps, you wouldn't want that inch right there open. But now that we've got that, that aluminum triangle welded on there and making contact with that angle iron right there all the way up and down through there, that's bracing that plate up really nice. And uh, our aluminum angle welded on the top and the bottom, uh, to help stiffen the ends of that plate is uh, something that's that's very necessary too, I think. And I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna make this part one of the of the work on this, and we'll do this in different parts, and that way the video doesn't run too long. Uh, now that this ramp modification's done, uh, we'll make this part one. This video be part one, and then. We'll move on and uh, do the other stuff. And so I wanna, I wanna thank y'all for watching this part. And uh, like I always say, learn how to work with what you got. That way you always have everything you need. Hey y'all, see me here in the break room at NBS Weld, and I'm hollering at you about the NBS Weld T-shirts. We've still got NBS Welding t-shirts with the NBS Welding on the front, big NBS Welding on the back. Uh, we have had a lot of orders so far, which uh, a lot for us doesn't take that much, but uh, we got the American flag right here on the sleeve. Uh, we do still have t-shirts. Uh, it helps the channel. If you buy a t-shirt, if you if you think you'd like to have an NBS welding t-shirt, uh, please get a hold of us. Send Tina an email request to uh, nbswelding at aol.com. Uh, we have had some people order t-shirts, and of course we want to give the shout out and the thanks for helping the channel by ordering a t-shirt. And uh, we have got a lot of compliments these are good quality shirts. People have mentioned that they're good. They're good quality shirts. Uh, they're comfortable and everybody likes them. Uh, haven't got any complaints at all uh, on the t-shirts that we mailed out. So uh, $25 plus shipping for a t-shirt. 
And if you send the email request to Tina, NBS Welding at AOL.com, and she'll figure out where you're at, and she can figure out what it's going to cost to ship it to you, and we'll get it done. All right? So thank you.